Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, I just want to say thank you to all of you for joining Hello Self Podcast today. You're going to have a ball. I've got a comedian here and um, we both just kind of play off of each other. So get ready for anything. The podcast, as you know, if you've been watching before, is to help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans at any age in your life. So if you're standing at the corner of Lost and where do I go from here? I'm saying you're going to get some great insights from Sunny Brown, my guest today, from her story of how she got started. And just to let you know, I am Patricia Leonard, and I'm your host. I'm an inspirational speaker, an author, and business and life coach. So here we go. I'm going to get this started a little bit. Just say hi, Sunny, to our audience. Hi, everyone. I'm so, so excited to be here on your show, Patricia, and I'm just really honored to add my story to all the wonderful guests that you've already had on your show. And um, I hope that my story really does, um, you know, inspire someone else. Well, it inspired me, so I'm sure <laughs> it'll inspire others. And it even gets richer as we go. I met uh, Sunny through Women in Film and Television here in Nashville, Tennessee. She's from Alabama, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. from Birmingham. She's from mm -hmm. Alabama. And when I read her bio, I always ask for a little bio so I can do some introduction too. But uh, when I read her bio, I just learned more and more about her. And she's going to share with you some of her Hello Self moments that changed her life. So just let me give you a little overview of who Sunny is based upon her bio. She started being a comedian when she was young and she'll tell you more about all this. I'm just gonna hit some highlights. And she had an epiphany and we're gonna call it a hello self moment that really shifted her life. And um, a comedian as a woman was not really always easy in the culture that we have grown up in. So I think that you're going to find her story very inspiring and offer you some forward movement. And it doesn't have to be a comedian in whatever your desire is because we both promote the fact that whatever your heart and your spirit is telling you, investigate because it just might be your future. She has, um, so, uh, she's uh, written books. She's a uh, uh, humor, has a, her own humor column. She's a winner of stand up comedy contest. She'll tell you more about the details. Co created the musical comedy variety show, A Night on the Cascade Lounge. So mm -hmm. you're going to get ready for something <laughs> great. She's written and performed two one woman shows. And that really excited me because I have a one woman show called Hello Self. It's a woman waking up in life in, uh, in her senior years. She's got another show. Um, her newest one is The Invisible or An Invisible Woman. And she'll give you more of the details about that because 2023 is not just for women, but it is a time for us to step out and follow those desires that we've got laying on our someday shelf. It's now time. Sunny believes that laughter can unify and heal and has lent her talents for several philanthropic organizations. So we're going to get started. Um, she'll tell you a little bit more about her um, website and all of those kind of things as we move and we'll just have a conversation. I may jump in and ask her some questions. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn it over to you, Sunny, now to just start any place in your life because I believe that in every story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So no matter what you share, there's going to be a gift for our listeners. So here we go. It's your turn now. 
<laughs> well, thank you again for having me on here. And I'm uh, really honored to share my story. I um, actually, as you said, and maybe I said that I did not know I was funny. I didn't discover I was actually funny until I was, or write the first funny thing until I was 48 years old. And so it it just took me by complete surprise. As you said, um, even as a you even said as a child, you really enjoyed making people laugh, didn't you? Well, I well, and when I was a child, I was not meaning to make people laugh. Oh. I did not realize that. It really frustrated me that um, <clears throat> excuse me, people, my family were all laughing. My parents would call me Gracie, <laughs> as a nod to Gracie Allen. I some of <laughs> you viewers might know who she is, and some might not. She was uh, back in the the golden age of you know the 40s and 50s with um, it was George Burns was her husband and George Burns and Gracie Allen yes and of course I did not know any of this I was a little and they would call me Gracie because I was always they were always laughing at everything I said which really frustrated me as a child because wow. I didn't want to yes. be taken seriously and it was only truly um, just when the internet came, <laughs> when I had the internet and when I was in my, you know, around 50 that, uh, I realized, oh, I am a comedian and what is that? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And, discovery. Yeah, that self-discovery. Yeah. And I would look up and I said, oh, who is Gracie out? You know, and I started watching YouTube videos of their old shows and yeah. I saw so much of the 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 similarities in and it was so weird how I, my parents obviously saw that when I was really little you know that and I think that's funny then, but I think you've just brought out a great point a lot of people can see our talent before we can that's a oh, fact yes yes when as a matter of fact after I had my epiphany which I'll tell you about in a oh, minute yes uh, I would tell people, oh, you know, I'm funny. I'm a comedian. They would say, uh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the last to know. I was the I was a late bloomer and I was really the last to know myself, yes. <laughs> which is, you know, um, so you're right. I think other people can see sometimes, but if you don't know it in your own mind, it doesn't have any meaning for you. No, that's you know? right. So um, <clears throat> even now when I'll do a show, particularly if there's some, you know, older age group in the audience, they will come up to me. One or two people, every show will come up to me and say, did I see some Gracie Allen in there? Or you reminded me, you probably don't know who Gracie Allen is. <laughs> so Yes, yeah. <laughs> she's been a part of my life, my whole life. Yes. Which is, I think she had died maybe before I was even born. I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, don't say that because I can remember her. <laughs> well, I'm probably wrong about that. Yeah, you're wrong about that. <laughs> oh my but, god! Um, so I, um, I had been a stay-at-home mom. Well, I, I studied dance. I had always been in the performing part. Yes. And uh, I studied dance in college. And I went on to have a modeling career. And then I got married. And I, my husband and I, I really wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So that was something that uh, we made happen. It wasn't always easy. But yes. we that was important to me. And I... I wanted to do that. So it was really as my son, my oldest child had gone off to college and my daughter was approaching her senior year of high school. And of course, so many women, especially, but men too, but so many women start approaching that empty nest syndrome and kind of asking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? And that's kind of talking to yourself, right? Yes. Asking yes. Yourself. Good point what am I going to do? What's next? And I, I was doing that. And I actually had been, been writing. Well, I'll start back a little bit. I'm sorry if I go back and forth. No, please just be yourself. <laughs> That's part of the comedy. Okay, <laughs> oh, wait, no I forgot that. <laughs> right. Well, prior to that, 
I uh, blogs had started coming out uh, and being popular and I did not know what a blog was and, and I thought and I'm one of these I really don't like being left behind even though I'm always a late bloomer I'm always kind of the last to know I wanted to get in on what is a blog and so I told my kids <laughs> and I was going to start a blog and of course they all they rolled their eyes and yeah, right, from the room because <laughs> as soon as I sit down to a computer, I'm saying, hey, can somebody come help me? <laughs> Technology. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, I thought, well, I'll just write a blog about how you can enjoy your life, add all moments of, of beauty and glamour and joy into your life no matter where you are and you don't have to be in you know beverly hills or no you know, right island. and you can you don't have to be wealthy uh, you, there's so many just the joys in life can be so simple yeah and so i had started a blog about that and i was writing and I had no idea anyone was reading my blog. I mean, I just didn't know. <laughs> <So> <laughs> a lot of people I, out there, same place, aren't there? Yes. Yeah. So if there's something you want to say and talk about and explore, just go ahead and do it. And people yes. will find you. I don't even know how they find you, but they find you. And yes. I happened to be seated at a dinner next to um, this gentleman and his wife and he was starting a magazine and he said he wanted me to write a column and I said on what and he said on your blog the same thing you write on your blog I had no idea he was reading my blog or anybody was reading my blog so see, that's another hello self moment that yeah. we don't see but somebody helped mm -hmm. us see that wow what I've been doing is something that's valuable yes okay great and that le that moves you on to something else yes well it did so i wrote that column for about uh, a year and people started wanting me to come and speak to their organizations for their events and things and oh my goodness that went so badly <laughs> Was another comedy act <laughs> it was something was missing and i felt like something was missing in my column too right but i couldn't figure out what it was i couldn't put my finger on it and then one morning i woke up and i guess i had had a hello self moment in a dream <laughs> you know it had come to me in a at night time in a dream and i woke up that morning and i said i had a whole one woman show in my head and it was based on my column so it was a way to get my all my um all the information and the fun of my column in a fun way versus just speaking yes. you know it, it kind of helped me form the missing link between what i was writing about and how to speak about it and that really and, engages people at a different level because a, a written column engages their mind. Whereas if you're acting and joking, it's engaging yeah. a different parts of themselves, their emotional self. Yeah, that's well, exciting. You're right. You're exactly right about that, Patricia. And I haven't really thought of it that way, How what the difference was. I know that when I'm writing something humorous for people to read themselves yes. it's very different than me writing it to perform it for them yes it's, it's just a different type of writing so um so i it took me seven months to bring the show to life it was called confessions of a glamorous mind and it uh it was really i'm telling you i did not expect the reaction it that people had and so i didn't even record it <laughs> i didn't even record the show i performed it for a thursday friday night and a sunday afternoon and then i had people wanting me to do it so many places was that in so, a speaking engagement or a theater or what i did it in a theater in okay. like a, a small like cabaret theater but yes. then they wanted me to perform it for different events and groups yes. around you Fantastic. know so 
um, that was wonderful. I, I, I had people wanting, you know, to send the tape of it off to other places. And I, I, I didn't even record it. I wasn't. I don't have a tape. <laughs> oh I didn't God. know I was going to do it again. You know, you really know how to market. <laughs> oh boy. It's love to tell you. So, um, uh, I, I, um, then after that show was over, I didn't know that you really had a, you know, kind of a down the blues, you know, the post show blues. And so again, I find, I found myself, what am I going to do now? You know, what's next? And I'm at this corner of what's next, and I don't know which way to go. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You know, all these moments when you start, okay, now what? You just kind of ask yourself, now what? What's next? So I found myself doing that again because it had consumed me for yes. seven months, you know, and then it was over. And, and then I started realizing, I know this doesn't sound real, but I didn't realize that it was a comedy, really. I didn't realize that it was funny. I didn't <laughs> So I started thinking about, oh, how funny it was, how much people laughed. <laughs> you know, of course it was a comedy. I, how did I not realize it at the time? And so I realized in that moment what had been missing in my column was humor, was all the humor. So oh, I rewrote the column that I was about to turn in and I went and met with my editor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting over a cold I've had. So my, me too. <laughs> vocal, my vocal cords are still a little raspy. I'm so sorry. No, that's good. Okay. And um, I showed him and I met with him about really, I'd like my column is more a humor column. That's what it should be. That was missing. And he couldn't believe the difference in the two columns. And so from that moment on, it was a humor column and it would just, it resonated. And it's about, well, for all people really, but more and more it became about women and just how society makes us feel as we get older, just invisible, invisible you know? And <laughs> yeah. so I will, let me just uh, intersect something here. I really like um, how you're, and I want to make sure the audience catches this. You're talking about waking up as you move along to who you are and what. So it's a, it's really like exploring life, not giving up, finding, but just moving. What's the next? Oh, well, that's funny. Oh, well, maybe I'll be. So I love the way that your process has worked is that it is, moments of hello self to say oh one morning I woke up and it, this and then I, d I did something funny and I told my yeah so it's a discovery isn't it oh it is self-discovery yes. just all along the way one thing just leads to another if you just go explore it yes and, that's it you know and are open to it open yes. to what it could be and so I thought, <laughs> you know, this sounds crazy, but I thought, oh, I'm funny. I'm a comedian. And then <laughs> this is when, Patricia, I had my epiphany. And it was a really life-changing moment for me in every way. And it was, it was a real spiritual experience, I'm going to say. It affected me in such a profound way. And as I sat there in our living room and the realization, it's almost like you see the cartoons, the light bulb goes yes. on over your head. The realization that I was a comedian and that I was funny came flooding into me. And in my consciousness, every, everything since my childhood up to that moment that I had heard, witnessed, thought of um, anything that was funny, anything humorous came flooding into my mind. Yes. And for four and a half days, I wrote. It was like I, the only thing I could see were the words, the visions and images coming to me. I wrote day and night. I, I, I wrote out of the shower. I wrote 
and wrote and wrote and wrote for four and a half days. How it was, it was, it was, I can't explain it. It was yes. very, it was, uh, uh, it was just like I was blind and the only thing I could see was what had come into my mind, my consciousness. Yeah. And so after that four and a half days, it stopped and I was exhausted and I was confused. I didn't understand what it meant. I had pages and pages and pages of, of jokes, um, stories, essays, partial jokes, ideas, just all around me. I had written for four and a half days. And, and, and then I, I cried because I didn't know what it meant. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> yes. And so, um, but I had so much material that I had written. And, and I was, after that, a few days later, you know, my husband was just, you know, <laughs> he just didn't know. He said he would walk by and hear me laughing as I'm running. Sunny, writing. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so I was talking with a friend of mine I, and I said, oh, you know, so I am a comedian. I'm a comedy writer. I need to go uh, where I can observe funny things. <laughs> this is how, you know, when you don't know, yes. you just start. I didn't know, Patricia, where it was oh. leading, what it meant. And so I said, oh, where, where would I go see funny things or whatever? And there's a comedy club here in Birmingham. And for some reason in my mind, I thought I would go and observe comedy there right so I went on to their website and saw that uh, they were hiring and when I called the woman on the phone misunderstood and thought I was calling about performing for an open mic oh my god that's <laughs> even better <laughs> <laughs> this was on a Tuesday and I'd never been I mean I I I'd never really watched comedy I couldn't tell you one thing about stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and God. So, I know. And I said, oh, she said, well, I have an opening this Friday. It just opened up and this was on a Tuesday. So my mind, I was thinking, oh, stand-up comedy. I should, what would I do? And then I thought, well, I do have something I've just written. <laughs> All this stuff <laughs> I've just written. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's an essay here. I could do that. And she was getting irritated with me on the phone because uh, I was just. You were discovering on the phone. <laughs> All the process was going on in my mind while I was on the phone. Right? <laughs> and I thought, Billy, my husband, he's going to he's gonna think I've lost my mind. But <laughs> I said, I'll say yes and I'll tell him and then I can call and cancel. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I said, and yes. And he said, go do it. <laughs> yes. I told him. He said, well, why not? <laughs> okay so I actually did go and do it and Patricia I didn't know it was a contest I didn't know and I I was the co-winner they usually only pick one but they picked me too <laughs> and invited me to come back and perform in their big showroom oh with 300 goodness. people Two weeks later. Oh my so, gosh. <laughs> yes. So I thought, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try anything if you. <laughs> well, why not? It's all for fun. If nobody else does. <laughs> That's right. Hi. So I did. Now, this is very interesting. Patricia, and maybe some of your viewers have experienced this, and this will help them because it helped me later, right? Yes. <clears throat> so we were in the green room backstage. They call the backstage the green room while you're yes. waiting to go on. And I didn't realize that this was like a big, of course, nobody tells me anything. And I didn't realize it was a big year in showcase where comedians who had been winning these contests all year long we're now coming to this year in showcase for their big <laughs> big opportunity <laughs> and they were from all over the southeast oh, you know wow. they were from 
Memphis and New Orleans and Mobile and Jacksonville, Florida and Nashville and Atlanta, they were from all over. And there I was. And so someone had started going around asking, oh, who you are and where you're from and how long you've been doing it. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> no. I made the mistake. I said two weeks ago. <laughs> they were all, <laughs> it's funny now, but Fabulous. they were all five years, three years, eight yes. years. You know? I mean, <laughs> and when I, I just, you know, I was being truthful yes. and honest and, and, and obviously to them blowing it off. Right. Yes. It changed the atmosphere in the room. They, it, they were not happy with me being there. It, it was Oh not. no. I thought they were going to say this was fabulous. Oh no. No, no, no Patricia. I suddenly realized I didn't belong there. I had not paid my dues to be there. Oh, yeah, I, that's right. That's how we become expert. Yes, let me tell <laughs> you, it got into my head. Yes, it oh my gosh. Psyched me out. I suddenly felt there, <laughs> they were mad that I was there and I didn't belong. And I went out on that stage for six minutes and I bombed. No, oh, no. Oh, because, yeah, they created Even an Even my husband didn't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> my best cheerleader didn't laugh. <laughs> it was so painful. It was so painful. And um, my husband, after he goes, what was that? You didn't, it was nothing. I said, but it was only after doing some self-introspection. Yes. Afterwards that I realized what had happened that had gotten into my head that I did not belong there and yes. I had not paid my dues. So don't let other people get into your head. Don't right. let them, their experience, take away what you know you are doing. Great and, advice. Oh my God, that is great advice, Sunny. Oh. And that is firsthand experience of actually dying on stage for six minutes in front of 300 people. You could have even turned that around and said, this is what somebody does when they're insecure the first time and they're about to yeah, I know. But they wouldn't you know, have found it funny because they're all experts. <laughs> yeah. And then, and so later I thought I should have said, you've been doing this for five years and you're just here. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me two weeks. No, that's terrible. But um, I, I, I didn't say that. I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, but oh my God. I got to share something that I did in corporate America one time. And we'll come back to that because I was in the room with all these, I was doing a, a workshop on uh, communication. And yeah. so I asked the first question, how many of you have attended a communication workshop in the past? They all raised their hand. And I said, well, what are you doing here now? Did it not work? <laughs> <laughs> That's the same there was thing. a moment of silence and then they laughed. <laughs> And then they laugh. That's yeah. funny. So back That's to funny. your, yeah, back to your experience there. Oh my gosh, great advice. Yes. So do not let other people's opinions and thoughts and the way they, they will, oh, sorry, the way they think things should go and be, don't let that get into your head. Yes. Just Stay true to what you're I doing. love your statement that you look, you think about now if it were to happen again. <laughs> you just hear <laughs> After five years, what no. you got in five. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. So, oh, so, you know, it took me a little while to realize that that had affected me that way. And, you know, I, I got to get back out there. Right. Yes. Just, you have to go do it again. Once yes. I realized what had happened, why I had failed, right? I bombed out there, why yes. I had failed. I realized, oh, I have to do this again. Right. So you don't just fail and give up. That would have been terrible. And you know what? I think uh, mm -hmm. you're saying something about there are no failures, there are learning experiences. And yeah. you learned in that moment, it did not stop you, just like you're saying, but you said, 
I know next time I'm just going to say, is this as far as you go? <laughs> you know, that's just a little joke, right? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Between yeah. you yeah. and me and the that's podcast right. listeners. <laughs> I know. So, so I did. And, oh, it was a long, long, you know, getting up at you know telling my husband oh you know 10 o'clock at night oh i gotta go to a a um a stand-up at 11 o'clock on a tuesday night with four drunk people there you know i mean it was whew, it's you but you get better you do it you realize what you do like what you don't like what you want to do what you don't want to do and um i then I, you know, I wasn't enjoying that whole stand-up scene, yeah, to tell you the truth. Exactly. This special was, I realized, was not where I wanted to be spending yes. my time. It really wasn't my audience, to tell you the truth. But still, I was getting better. You know, I was, exactly. I was still learning something from it. And, and you know I what? Learned. That reminds me of something else, some old sayings, and I don't know where it came from, but do what you're doing where you are at the moment and it's going to take you but if you stand there and say oh I'm finished oh I don't like this but you went ahead and worked through it and then it positioned yeah very yes, good that's, advice that's right that's right yes. so then suddenly I got a call um from there was a, a there's a woman here who um She's in charge of a historic theater here, and they have a cabaret theater. And she was wanting to put together a group, a, a variety uh, show. It's a, a woman's uh, comedy variety act, and we called Feminine Hijinks. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Oh, my God, I love that. Feminine Hijinks. <laughs> and she wanted me and three other ladies to be, to be, um, the show to yes. she wanted me to be part of it. She had heard I was now doing comedy and you know and wanted me to be a part of it. So that we became very popular. Every show we did sell you know sold out. Sold out, sold out. Yeah. We were constantly adding more shows. It was very people love us. And I was really able to use a lot of my material. And so we did singing, we did sketches, we did stand up monologues, you know, it was just so much fun. And I realized, oh, that's my audience. My yes. audience is the theater crowd. And, um, and it just when you find your audience, your audience finds you, it clicks. And it just makes everything so much more fun. This feels right and it just all flows, doesn't it? Yes, yes it flows. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And so uh, we did that for several years and people still ask us now, when are y'all, I miss y'all, when are y'all going to do again? You know, but everybody's <laughs> kind of gone into different directions. But uh, maybe 2023, so who knows? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so then I, um, I, and I can't remember, you know, exactly point to point to point. But then I no. did have the idea for my um, my show, An Invisible Woman, The Disappearing Act of a Woman Over 50. And uh, that was a very successful show, again. And it, I did it I 2018. And then 2019, I sort of took the time off to, well, personal yeah. things we, my uh, in-laws were elderly and we were having to <clears throat> you know help there yes. a lot mm -hmm. and then the pandemic happened. I was going to say then the pandemic yeah stop those yes. yeah face That's face. Right. yeah and so I do um, I, I did quite a few comedy videos during the pandemic uh, and put those out there yeah you know there was no live <laughs> Yes, and people could have still enjoy life. They needed something to cheer them yes, up. <laughs> that's right. And so that was a lot of fun, truly. And I actually realized um, I enjoy doing comedy for a video, uh, for I guess would be television or something, even though you're not getting that immediate feedback from an, a live audience, right. which is my absolute favorite. But yes. it was very much like me for my column. People would read my column and I wouldn't hear or know they were laughing but then I run into them or they contact yes me. Oh, so funny so it's a delayed gratification yes. kind of 
<clears throat> excuse me, but um, so that was uh, very similar to that. Yes. And so now I've had, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm no, really no, sorry. no, I'm having the same thing. I took a cough drop a while ago and then I had to wipe my nose, excuse me. <laughs> it's life, it's life. It's life, that's right. So I then have had a lot of uh, people contacting me, I had a lot of people, very interesting people contacting me, a producer and um, a songwriter, wanting me to bring my show, An Invisible Woman, back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to have new music for it and bringing it back in a different way. And there's big plans to take it uh, to theaters all oh, around. Oh, fantastic. So, yes. yes. I yes. want to see it. I want to see it. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm thrilled. It is time to... Uh, bring her back and it's just more timely now than ever. Oh, I think it is too. It's funny how you got the basis for everything. You were building a platform all along. And I think yeah. the timing in 2023 and 2024 and 2025 is just going to be a bursting out of not just for women, but just for people in general, waking up to who they are and their talents. Yes. Yes. Well, I love hearing that. Yes. Oh, no, that's my prediction. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but well, I have had many hello self moments and I continue to have hello self moments. And I think that is the most important relationship you have is with yourself. Oh and my gosh, you are... You just gave me a big plug. I love that. And you know what? I, I want to add something in here. And I think I've told some of my audiences before. You said <clears throat> that you had an epiphany about your comedy and all of that. Well, yeah. and then you woke up and you started writing like crazy. Well, I kept asking God for <clears throat> month after month. What is, because I had written several books, I'd spoken, I'd been coaching, but I felt like there was something else. And I'm still in that place that there's still more that's yeah, the yeah. coming. But I w it was funny because I was asleep and it was four, I didn't know at the time it was four, but I heard this booming voice one day as it woke me up <clears throat> and it said, Patricia, just do hello self. And I said, so I woke up. <laughs> Because it was a male voice and it was like he was so frustrated with me. I've been telling you forever and you're not paying attention. So anyway, I said, what's a low self? I said to that voice, nothing, oh my nothing happened. <laughs> and I got up and went into the kitchen to get my breakfast and my coffee. And I mm -hmm. took my journal with me and I just started writing hello self. Then it became a book. And then it, it's become this podcast. Now it's I a woman it. show that I'm going to put out this year. But you know what? Those are the moments. And some of them come like you and I receive that. And mm -hmm. some don't. Uh, sometimes yes. you can see a sign as you're driving down the road. I was mm -hmm. talking to a client the other day. And she's international. And I said, let me ask. It just has a clear blue. I said, okay, she wants me to coach her on a business. But I said, let me ask you, have you ever thought about writing a book? She said, oh my God, I can't believe you're asking me that. I said, well, why? She said, that's something I've wanted to do my whole life. And oh, wow. You see, it's another wake up moment. Yes. And so we're going to work on that. But you're so right, and I'm so grateful that you have shared these kind of things because people need to pay attention. It might be on a post, uh, posted on a big sign as you're driving down the road, or somebody might say something to you, just like they told you, you're a comedian, you're a Gracie Allen. I am. <laughs> I know. I know. Is that, it is true. Yes. I think you're right, Patricia, that there are signs all along that we're not tuned into them or yes. paying attention but once we get the realization then we start noticing them and yes. I find myself even now I will find myself I'm drawn to something I'll see it notice it and I'll find myself turn you know just going on about and then I think oh wait I, I've noticed that for a reason I need to pay attention to what yes. Why I'm noticing this? Why? You know, you know. Oh my gosh! You and I could talk forever about this, but uh, <laughs> I wrote a book last year 
that is called the listening and the knowing. And that is exactly just like you said, uh, it's paying attention. And yeah, at first we doubt ourselves perhaps, but then mm -hmm. it's going back and really learning how to listen. What is that? And it's getting out of our mind. So we may need to walk mm -hmm. away in a day or two. Oh my gosh, that's what that meant. Or somebody <laughs> says, have you ever thought about writing a book? Or yes. So I think it's, uh, we're coming to these places in our life. And, uh, and just like with you, uh, we're coming to this point in our life where we uh, start to pay attention. The more we pay attention, the more we're given clarity. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And and then you know, I I um, I like to tell that story. I'm so thankful that you've had me on here to tell the story because I think that people have realizations, but it's like you said earlier, they disregard it. They think, yes. oh, it, you know, that's just a coincidence or you know, I'm just something in my mind, but they don't yes. ask them. And, or for fear, they, they, oh, they're fearful. Yes. Oh, you know, uh, fearful that they're going <laughs> to make a fool of themselves in front of, you know, 300 people for six minutes. But, well, yeah, you know, we know that's okay, don't we? <laughs> it is okay. I promise you. <laughs> what is your big life mission with your comedy and your shows? What do you, what do you feel is your big life mission with all of that? Oh, I just got a, a feeling right here when you just asked me that, Patricia, because I am still on the self discovery of that. And I, um, I'm, I've been caught in between comedy just for fun, right? Just, yes. I mean, I write comedy, which is just, it's just, funny but also comedy with a message and I'm most fulfilled and happy which I didn't realize at first like with my first show and everybody it was so meaningful to them and I didn't realize all that meaning was there and then with an invisible woman the meaning there that of how society tries to make women feel less than as they get older you know they try to make you feel invisible and we play along with that now it's you know exactly. people are waking up to that but it's still very prevalent and pervasive yes. and did you notice uh, last year at the oscars how it started to change did you notice all the senior women that were getting yes yes but and now i've noticed too that they like women who are a lot older Yes. Right. Oh boy, that's true. The in between age. <laughs> the fifties and sixty are still the in between. The yes. Kind of forgotten age, you know. Yes. If you play it into your seventies and your beautiful silver hair and you did, yeah, that's great. But yes. still, that in between age. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've got one foot in the youthful person and one yeah. foot over here in the aware person, more mature. But they yeah. don't know what to do with you because you're in between. <laughs> you're in between that's right I know. So, uh, my my comedy I like comedy and it's not political right and people really do thank me for yes. I don't use curse words and mm. uh, but I like a wink and a nod and I like you know innuendo and, and you know and I then they can draw their own opinion, right? That's you let them right. That's right. That's you're thinking that way. Yes. But I do enjoy that. And yes. so that is the undertones of my comedy. But I I like having just that little message in there and it's more social commentary. Uh -oh. And so more and more to get to your uh, question about what is my goal, how, what I would like. Yes. I would like to perform in comedy with my message to people who are going through, like our audience, your audience here, right? Reinventing themselves mm -hmm. and uh, finding out late bloomers, you know, um, who you are and, and women in particular and um, just perform Forming people who are looking to change their lives to get over the fear, yes. uh, you know, and yes. embrace life and step on out into who you really are. And then it's never too late to mm -hmm. become who you really are. And so I, I like that message that's in my comedy and I, I would, I'm open to collaborating and performing for if you need someone performing for your events or, you know, your speaking 
uh, engagements, things like that. I really enjoy that, along with my little nightclub app, you know. Yes, so. definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, how could somebody get a hold of you if you wanted to schedule, if they wanted to schedule something with you or they had uh, something they'd like to talk to you about to see if you'd be interested in it, a business opportunity or anything. And then I'd like to know what you've got planned. I know you're invisible woman, but what mm -hmm. have you got beyond that? Are you going to do it for, are you going to create your own theater? Or are you going to, um, what, what's your 2023 uh, vision? Okay. Well, um, your first question, yes, they can find me at my website, which uh, is, I'm going to be having a major overhaul of it. Uh, oh, okay. In a couple of months, but still anything you need to know and can reach me, it's still, you can still find it there. And that's at www.itsreallysunny.com, I-T-S. R E A L L Y S U N N Y. Like, it's really funny. And, yes, and note that it's S U N N Y because she S -U -N -N -Y. is. S U N N Y. Yes, yes. Yeah. Not S O. That's right. That's like exactly. And, but it, it's a, the sunny word just speaks to who you are. I mean, you're like a bright breath of air. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank no. you, Patricia. Well, oh. um, as for my goals, yes, well, um, bringing an invisible woman back to life on the stage is going to be a main focus for me this year. It's a lot to bring a, as you know, as you know, to bring a full, you know, 75 minute show to the stage and I sing. And so that's a, a lot. Yeah. Um, so is it a one woman show? It's a one woman show, but I have a couple of men, one or two men that, yes. um, you know, assist yes and uh and songs and do they show them. up in the show oh yes they're yes. they're they're part of the Fa show fabulous yes. fabulous it's a really fun cabaret yes uh type of show and also i would like to explore actually um performing more for events also in addition to my like corporate know, events or organizational events yeah like yes yes cruise um, ship cruise ship as long as you know calm seas yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to know are you going to take it to broadway well uh the producer is in new york and he wants to bring it to off broadway in 2024 early 2024 that is exactly what mm -hmm. i'm feeling Really? So it's so interesting that you asked that. So um, I'm very intuitive. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add a, an intuitive service to my, yes, uh, oh, to my sure. offerings. Yes, because oh, I, love that. I, I got a feel. I didn't know your producer was from New York, but yeah, don't you don't you lose that thought in your head. So what is he wanting to do? Yes, he's wanting um, by early 2024 to have it off Broadway. I'm telling yeah. you, it's going to happen. Oh. And I, I didn't even know, know that. And oh, here no. you're saying you get some. Told. Yes. Mm. Wow. When you asked well, me that, it kind of, I thought, wow. Yeah. Well, Be um, I'm going to hold you to it, Patricia. Okay, <laughs> hold me to it. And I want to be on the front row. <laughs> yeah. I want a ticket. And, you know, something else that it fell into my lap at the end of last year was I got to uh, be in a movie that was filmed in Nashville, that women in film and yes. television was uh, behind producing. And they actually, I was, I was asked to star in the movie and it was a drama. And it was, it's a beautiful short film, drama, short drama film. Yes. And I really had not done a lot of drama <laughs> and I found, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed doing, uh, making a film. And so I, that's something I would like to explore more of. And of course, if you wanted to ask me what my main goal that I would love to be in a, a sitcom. Oh, <laughs> yes. In front of a live studio audience. I think that would be the ultimate. Like on television? A television comedy, yes. Yes. In, with a live studio audience. I think that's the best of both worlds. And this is the place to speak those things out loud because 
they reverber they reverberate out to and we don't know who they'll reverberate out to uh, well i think you made me feel confident and safe enough to say it out loud and speak it here on your on your podcast well, i i really don't say that to very many people well <laughs> and i see that in you i mean i do i see that in you and we've talked off and on about uh, little things but i didn't really know but i just sense those kind of things and uh, this is why this hello self is so good because it comes at the mental level, just like you say, don't be afraid, step in, yeah. comes yeah. at the emotional level, hello self yeah. is, how do I feel? Mm. Oh gosh, I'm scared to death. Or the spiritual mm. level that signs just show up and I pay attention. And then the yes. physical level, you just said, ooh, that gave, Can we feel, yes. yes. Feel it. And, yes. And and I Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 please. I want to say that, yes, I have been uncomfortable every step of the way. I have been out of my comfort zone, feeling very uncomfortable mm -hmm. every step of the way. Listen every to that I audience, because that's great yes. advice. Yes, but I, I just... I've just done it. And my husband has been my biggest supporter and cheerleader. I couldn't do it without him, Billy Brown. And I, um, he, he just has encouraged me every step of the way. I have um, Edie Hand, who you might know. Yes. Of course you know Edie. Yes. She's been a big mentor for me. Uh, supporting me and she's the one that got me involved with women in film yes in and got to meet all of you wonderful wonderful women who have been so inspiring for me and, and, and we're just growing like crazy too it's just getting bigger and bigger yes it's amazing what's happening there yes. so um, I'm honored to be a part of that group and so I think too finding supporters finding people who believe in you mm. and who recognize that in you and um you know, not someone who's tearing you down, right? Not no, people who exactly, who, yeah, uh, is really been been an important part for me too. Yeah, Divine you know, I think that's true. If uh, because I just had somebody talking to me the other day and said, um, people are telling me don't, and it. I'm not going to mention names, but don't do this, do this. And I said, you know what? I didn't say it in front of anybody else, but I said to this woman, do what your heart says so that you don't have any regrets at the end. If so-and-so hadn't have discouraged me, I would have gone on to do this. We have to listen to our own heart. And that is such great advice. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's and what Patricia, you did. What was, the name of your book? what was the name of your book you said that you um, had written about uh, listening to the- or Listening the and the knowing. Listening. Yeah, and I'm gonna write that down. I want to get that. Uh, yeah, well, we uh, we can talk, but the yes. it's on Amazon. Have you written a book too? You know what? Um, several years ago, my husband said all of your essays, all of your columns, need to be condensed into a book. So that he, I said, well, I do not know at all how to go about self-publishing a book. He is he so said, right. Oh. So he did it for me, and I do. Oh. It's, I have it. Yes, let me, what is the name of it? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, well, it's called LMAO. LMAO. <laughs> Laughing My Off. Oh, yeah. A book of humor essays to help you lose weight. <laughs> oh, my. But you know what? You're so right. All of those things. And that's what I was thinking. I thought, oh, my gosh, if she hasn't done this, her blogs are books. I wrote. Uh, 2000 blogs over the last uh, I don't know oh eight, my gosh. yeah eight wow. years but here's what I did uh they were motivational sayings they were so I created a, a calendar that each oh. day they would open up to and it wasn't I just take a quote out of the blog but I would yeah. take it out of there there's so many things and then I created a deck of professional cards for women that it oh, is a yeah becoming that woman is, I'm gonna but, have to find all that you sure. can do uh yeah on my website but uh but this is not about promoting me but I want to mm -hmm. say these are things that you can do that really market you too 
and or anybody listening is something like that that makes your heart sing it doesn't always have to be comedy it doesn't always have to be coaching or speaking or anything it can be anything yes that's yeah. right it, uh, mine just happens to be comedy yeah i do have that book right here okay here, here it is. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> Laughing my mm, off. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So it is says, it on Amazon? It is on Amazon. And it Go says to Amazon uh, you know, and look for Sunny's book, Sunny <laughs> Brown, Laughing Your A off. <laughs> a collection of humor essays help you lose weight. It says, Does this book make my butt look small? <laughs> yeah, because they say that comedy, uh, laughing, helps you reduce use calories. So you got a you got a built-in thing. Come to my show and you'll lose five pounds. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well oh you know and what you said too, I do believe comedy can unify. Yes. I can I think it can bring people together. You might not agree on a lot of things, but if you can all find the same kind of thing funny or the humor in something, I think that can bring people together. You know and what, I've learned to laugh at myself. Sometimes when somebody will pull me off in traffic and I'll go, oh, you nutcake. And then I go, <laughs> Patricia, you are being ridiculous. That person doesn't even know that you said that. <laughs> That is a good thing for us to all remember. I'm going to have to remember that because, yeah, driving and traffic can make you crazy. <laughs> oh, I got something else. You just inspired me to. My sister and I, she lives in Alabama. She does. And, yes. Part? And I will, she, she's a singer, songwriter, and she's kind of a comed comedian herself. But anyway, I, um, I will call her. And I think this is a great comedy show, but so I'll call her and I'll say, um, do you have a minute? And she said, sure. And I start talking and I start <laughs> talking and I start and I keep talking and I keep talking and I say, oh, Linda, we've been on the phone for two hours. Oh, uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> she says. I, I really don't have any more time. So now the big joke is, do you have a minute? <laughs> because they, oh, my family won't even answer now because they know it's going to be two hours. <laughs> so I told that Linda, is, we need to come up with a comedy show. Do you have a minute? <laughs> I know that is a great title and idea for a show. It really is. Yes. Oh, you know, yeah, but fine. oh, Sunny, this has been so fun. Um, it has been for me too. Yeah, yeah, and I've had a great time, and it's I, I love the way the dialogue just went back and forth, and uh, that. But I also love what you did. You got real about the phases that you've gone through as someone who's following their heart, becoming aware of who they are, because that's what hello self is about: is awareness of who self is, their talents. And uh, acknowledging that and, you know, really taking it because that's why we're here on this planet at this time. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it is about what do I have to give? What is yes. this, that, what, what is my talent to give? Yes. And I will say, and I know we've got to go, but one more thing is that yes. when I am writing. You got a minute? You got a minute, Patricia? <laughs> <laughs> is that when I'm writing, I sit down to write and, and I feel that it's coming to me through me, you know, it's just coming to me. And so I, when I feel very happy or satisfied or proud of something that I've written, that's new and funny and resonates with people, I feel like it's not me. It's someone else, the higher power, universe, God, whatever you want to call it brought it through me and that I wrote it down. So I'm sitting there and my husband says, I hear you laughing and I am just laughing. And I feel like I could be very satisfied just putting it in my desk drawer and closing it because it is so funny. And I like, it. but then I realized that that is not um, my end of the bargain. I have yes. to hold up my end of the bargain because I have to then put this out to the world and give it to other people. It's been given to me. And now I have to give it back to other That's people. That's a very different way to look at it than all monetarily or not, because everything we do in life ripples out 
whether it's negative or positive, rig right. ripples out to make an impact on someone, on a society, on a business. Oh, what a great message at the end. Yeah. I really do feel like I could put that in my desk drawer and I would feel so happy because it is so funny and just funny and real. And then I realized, oh, I have to give it back. And so, and then, you know, you do sit there and say, well, how do I do that? And they'll yes. do those hello self moments too, right? What, what is my path? To, exactly, to exactly. Because your support system is very important. And I love the fact that you talked, uh, that you gave your husband some uh, acknowledgement too, because a lot of times it is a team effort in our society. It, Whether oh, I don't think you can do anything alone. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you can do it all by yourself. Yes. And whether it's a, a business partner or a family member or what, it's uh, acknowledging that I am here because of God. I'm here because of my husband. I'm here because of those other people that supported me along the way, even when I didn't know what my path was. 100%. Yes. yes. I, that's oh, absolutely. my gosh, Sunny. I <laughs> hope that our audience loves this as much as I have. <laughs> well, I do too. I've enjoyed oh it so much. I knew oh. that we had so many similarities yes. in our you know, lives and our work that we do. And I was so excited for the opportunity to, to be on your show. I love its message. I love what you're doing. Oh, and, and yes. And, and you're an example of a woman waking up at different stages in her life and not giving up, but waking up. Waking up. That's right. That's a yeah. great distinction. Not yeah. giving up, waking up. Yeah. You've got you've yeah. got a bright future ahead of you too. And don't don't forget, I want a front row seat. You are gonna have it. I'll make sure of it, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. So I want to say. To my audience, thank you so much for listening today. And I hope that you got from this story of Sunny Brown, that you got some ideas, some suggestions, some strategies, hope and inspiration to follow your heart in what you, you want to do. And again, I am Patricia Leonard. I am your podcast Hello, self-host. And uh, remember, I always like to tell you, keep dreaming. That's what life's about. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming.